Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be looking at how we can optimize and make this code a little bit cleaner whenever we're working with uh, multiple threads that are executing at once and that are doing the same thing. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to use an executor service. The advantage to uh, using an executor service is one, our code is going to look clearer and or cleaner. And two, there's a little less overhead because it manages the creation of threads. So you can imagine, like right now, for example, we're creating a bunch of different threads. I think we're creating um, a thread for each of the lists that we have. In this case, we have 10 lists. And so we're creating 10 different threads. Now, the thing is, each time we start the thread that has uh, some overhead, it slows the computer down a little bit. So we want to minimize the number of threads that we start, but you know we want to kind of do it optimally. The best so so executor service it kind of takes care of this stuff this stuff for us in the background. What it has is it has a bunch of threads ready to go. It has a bunch of maybe like ten threads just ready to go, and then you're gonna feed a task to the executor service. Right? You might feed one task where you're like, okay, sort the sort this list. So you feed that task, and then it uses one of those threads that it has ready to go, and it uh, executes the task. And then you might feed ten more tasks. And because it has maybe nine tasks and nine uh, threads that are still available, those nine threads get filled up, and then you have one task that's kind of just uh, in limbo. It's waiting for a thread to open up that it can jump onto, and then uh, the executor service can execute. So that that's why we want to use the executor service. So the way we're going to do this is first, um, before we do that, actually note that what we're doing here is we're waiting for all of the threads to finish using using this thread dot join. And the way we do that, it's uh, it's not the best way to do it. I mean, what we're doing is we're looping through each thread, and this isn't very intuitive at first because, or I, I mean, I guess yeah, it's not it's just not too intuitive because why does one join in one thread uh, affect the join in the other threads, right? So we're going to refactor that logic a little bit too. Okay, so what we're going to do this now is we're going to. Get rid of all of that code. We're even going to get rid of this uh, join list code, and let's just start by creating an executor service. So executor service. It's, uh, let's look at it. It's an interface that has a couple of methods. It has the shutdown method. It has shutdown now. It has a couple of methods, right? Um, but there aren't. It doesn't have any implementations for these methods because it's an interface. So because of that, we can't instantiate it directly. We have to use a static method where it's called in the executors class. So in this executors class, we can create an executor service that has those methods defined for us. And the one we want to use is we want to create a fixed thread pool. So what this does is it manages the number of threads automatically for us. So we're going to tell it, OK, create 10 different threads and then use those 10 threads to um, uh, just uh, do whatever task we task we, uh, we want it to. This, in this case, let's uh, let's be a little clever and let's create the number of threads that are equal to the number of processors or cores on the computer. So let's just print this information out to get a sense of um, how this is working. So I'm going to copy. I'm going to. I'm just going to take this and I'm going to print this information out. So if we do this, uh, let's see here. So uh, we see that um, my computer has eight available processors, which means that we can run eight different threads really efficiently on them. So we're going to create an executor service that has eight different um, threads just ready to go. And that's going to be equal to the number of processors on my uh, device. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use this method called invoke all. What this invoke all method does is it takes in a collection of um, what we call callables that should be executed. So actually, let's make it a little more simple. All that's going to happen, we're not going to return any value. All we're going to do is we're just going to execute a task, and then we're going to um, return. In this case, we're sorting these lists right here. Where are they? Over here in this random number list. OK, so how are we going to do this? Let's, um, we need to create a bunch of callables, a bunch of these guys callables. And the way we do this is we need an array list. And OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put a callable inside each of each uh, item inside of the array list. And now the 
callable. Let's look at this really quickly. Um, so it returns the results, and the the parameter v is the result type. So what we'll, I guess let's yeah I guess we will return a value then in, in this example. In this case, let's just return all of our lists. Let's return the sorted list. Um, okay, so we're going to return the sorted list, and let's call this uh, uh, maybe uh, we'll just call it callables. It's not the best name, but It'll do the job. And then we're just going to say that it's a new array list. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to iterate over the number of lists that we have. So we have 10 different lists that we want to sort. So we're going to iterate over all of them. And let's just call the parameter list to sort. Oops, sort. And let's close this guy off. And now I need my braces. Okay, so now what we're going to do is for each of these guys, uh, we need to create a callable, and then we need to add it to this. Um, we need to add it to this uh, callables array list. So what we're going to do is we're going to do list to sort. Sorry, we're going to do callables dot add, and now we're going to define a callable. So before I use the lambda and the lambda expression, then let's just look at the anonymous inner type. New callable. Okay, so then in this case, we need to add. Array. Okay, it's not good. Arrays. All right, let me pause this and restart a clip. Hey guys, sorry about that. Okay, so now let's see here. Oh man. So uh, okay, I guess it was an eclipse bug, but I had to turn off auto uh, complete for a second while I entered that in. But okay, so now everything works fine. Okay, so this is what the anonymous. Um, uh, in our class is going to look like and what we're going to do is we're just going to do collections dot sort and in this case what we want to sort is we want to we want to sort this list to sort up here this guy up there and so we would just do collections dot sort and then we could return the list to sort okay fair enough so now let's uh let's make this a little cleaner by using the lambda expression and okay so we're just going to return this list right here all right so now Let's use the lambda expression. And okay, so we're not going to be passing anything in, so we're just going to have empty parentheses. And now what we're going to do is we're going to sort the list to sort, and then we're just going to return it. And there we go. Very easy. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to invoke all of these tasks that we've just created. None of note that like none of these tasks are actually being executed. We're just defining what should happen when each task is executed. And what we're saying inside of this callables.add is we're saying um, that okay every time on like every time this uh, service has a free thread or uh, yeah has a free thread it should just do whatever is inside of here which in this case it should sort it and then it should return the list the, the sorted list. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to invoke all, and we're going to pass in callables. And now we, we're going to need to wrap this in a try-catch uh, clause in case um, it gets interrupted. All right, and so now what's going to happen is this invoke all method, it's going to return something. It's going to return um, an array list, and it's going to return an array list of future, and then array list of double. Okay, so this this might seem a little confusing. Actually, let me make sure I got that right. Okay, so actually it's list, not an array list. And okay, do I need to import? I need to import list, and there we go. Okay, so what is going on? Well, what happens is as soon as we call this invoke all method, our main thread, it's going to block. Just the same way that our join statement was doing before way back when, right? So our main method is going to block until every single thread inside of here has finished executing. So, um, or every single uh, callable, I should say. So that until all of these callables have sorted every list, this our main thread is going to block. What that means is we're not going to go onto any other lines. We're just going to stay at this line until all the threads have been sorted. After that's happened, we're going to be passed this array list, and inside this array list, we're going to have a bunch of what are called future objects. 
So each of these future objects, all it's going to do is it's just going to contain this output. It's just going to contain this return item that we have over here. And so we can, for example, do this now. So out, dot, we're going to open up a stream, then we're going to go through each stream, and we're going to have a future, and then we're going to have an array list of double. And so we'll just, so actually we don't actually need that. We're just, we can just uh, call this future item. And now I'm going to put some braces in so that's a little more clear. So now we have this future item. And so now we can do future item dot get. And so what this is going to do is it's going to return an array list. Ah, oh, man, it happened again. Well, okay, so I won't actually, I think we'll need, um, try catch again. What this future item dot get is going to do is it's going to return an array list of doubles. So if we wanted to, for example, print out the sorted list, we could fetch this array list and then just uh, print it out. But I mean, in this case, I don't think we need to. Um, okay, so now let's run this and think we're good. I think we're good. So let's run this. We're going to go to our console. Notice that we're running. And okay, so I made a mistake. One thing you have to do with your executor service is you have to shut it down after you've um, after you've invoked or if after you've submitted anything for it to do. And you want it to shut down because those threads that it has, they're going to keep running maybe um, if you don't uh, shut them down. And that's just that's bad because as you just saw, even though our program finished executing, even after we sorted all the lists. Uh, it was still running, even though it didn't have any more work to do. So the way we do that is we uh, do service shut down, and what that means is it just tells the executor service to not accept any more um, it, it, to to not accept any more uh, callables or any more tasks for it to do. And once those tasks that it does have are finished, then it should just uh, close. So let's run it again. We're going to go to our console and notice that we finished executing. And it took about uh, 1500 milliseconds. So yeah, so I mean, it was pretty good. Our implementation before was slightly faster. And maybe that's just because there's a little bit more overhead working with executor services. But notice how our code is a lot more clean. We're using Lambda expressions. We don't even need this, for example, because um, if, we, if we did this, right, we could, we could just do uh, let's look at our, where are the lists that we're sorting that are going to be in here? Random number list, right? So if we did this, we could do uh, random num lists dot stream for each. And now we would have uh, another list, sorted list. And we could dot out print out and we just print it out. This should also work. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's run. For each, yeah. And... Okay, so this appears to be in sorted order, but I isn't putting them on different lines. Uh, I guess it has so much output to process. It might be a problem. Let's lower the number of items we're storing in each list to maybe 100 numbers. OK, there we go. And so uh, we see that the minimum value here is 1.7. And just to, yeah, it's definitely in ascending order. So all of these got sorted properly. And now we can just access them, access them like that. Um, yeah, so that looks good. And now we see that the highest values, um, you know, they're randomly distributed. So just uh, just have some fun, actually. We know that if we generate a random number, it should be uniformly distributed, right? So any number between 0 through 100 should have an equal likelihood or probability of being selected. So if we were to average the numbers, then we should, uh, we should get somewhere around 50. So what, let, let's do that actually, uh, using what we know about streams. 
So what we're gonna do is we need, actually need to do this. We need to go through each of these guys. And then what we're going to do is, let's see here, we're going to have a sorted list right here, sorted list. And then what we're going to do is, let's do this. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up another stream. So what we need to do actually is we need to map the stream to a double stream. And so what we're gonna do is for each item X inside of our stream, we're just going to say that it maps to itself X. So it seems kind of useless, but I think that should work. And now what we're gonna do is we're just going to average it. And this is going to double, so that's gonna return an average. And let's see here, did I, okay, so then we need to dot get as double. So then that's gonna convert it to a double. And now, it's very simple, we just do system dot out of printer line. Uh, lists average is average. And we don't actually need to sort our, sort our list to do that, but you know, just just to see how this worked out. And yeah, it is around 50. Um, so we can see that, okay, we have 40, 52. So it does seem to be randomly distributed. All right, so that wraps up this um, lecture on executor services. We're gonna look at um, some problems with threading and some, uh, yeah, we're gonna look at problems with uh, multi-threading in the next video. I'll see you guys then.